Hey, what's happening, Mobius fans? Thank you for joining me for this new video. Today, we take a look at the latest release of the Mobius Library series, published by Dark Horse, and which I just finished reading. As you can see, it comes as a soft cover, but it does, though, keep the same size as the previous issues from the series, minus the difference added by the hardcover, of course. So here, for example, you can see it side by side with the Art of Edena, exactly the same series, but of course, the format is the same, minus the addition of the cover. They did change a bit the, the formatting on the spine, if you can see, which is oh, it's a bit of a pity. I would like a bit more consistency when it comes to these things, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, and of course, you know, for reference, here it comes as, you know, with a regular trade paperback, you can see what the dimensions are, give or take. And uh, yeah, I would have preferred uh, a hardcover, but I do understand that making this book more affordable allows for a lower entry point and a wider spread, uh, especially since it's not an art book. Initially uh, announced in 2020, this book has been in the works for four long years, as the release date was postponed several times uh, due to the COVID pandemic, the complicated translation process, and the long review cycles. Regardless, the book is finally here, and what an amazing book it is. Um, before I dive in though, I really need to give a shout out to the translator, Edward Govan, uh, for taking on this beast and pulling off translating such a challenging book. He did a fantastic job. The book is so easy to read. It reads really smoothly and the amount of dedication uh, he put into the extensive endnotes is really incredible. So back to the book. Uh, what is it about? And more importantly, uh, should, I be, should, should it become part of your collection? Should you get it? Well, as usual, uh, that depends on how much of a fan you are. So let's start off by saying that the book contains very little art. It is uh, just over 280 pages long, and it does contain a bunch of full page illustrations, uh, plus some smaller excerpts from comic strips and even some sketches. In total, I counted about 40 images, uh, but most of them are in other books with just a handful, which I had not seen before. So if you're thinking of getting this book for the art, do not. It's not worth it. But if you, uh, like me, are curious about the life, the thought processes, the behind the scenes, and the journey of Mobius as a person and as an artist, then this book is definitely for you. Written by Numa Sadul, uh, Dr. Mobius and Mr. Jir is a collection of interviews gathered over almost 40 years, starting in 1974 and ending in 2011, just one year before the passing of Mobius. These were, of course, published originally in French as um, three separate books in uh, 1976. Um, you can see them here, how they're split. Um, so the 74, 75 interview. Then it was published again in 1991 with this block of interviews. And then finally uh, in 2015. And the 2015 French publishing contains the previous two books and adds a uh, last cycle of interviews from the 2000s. And I can see if I can find it, there it is. Um, and this 2015 edition, this French 2015 edition is essentially the translated book we are looking at today here. What I particularly loved about this book is how Numa Sadul does not hesitate um, to tackle controversial subjects, to correct Mobius, to provoke him, and uh, even to express his disagreements, um, all while respectfully 
all while being respectful and inquisitive at the same time. And what is obvious from reading the book is also that between the author and the artist, there is a deep friendship, clearly giving Numa the advantage here as he guides and pushes Mobius into directions and topics that a simple interviewer would not be able to do. The other thing I really enjoyed while reading this book was that I really felt like I was sitting on the couch with them, um, witnessing a series of intimate moments frozen in time where two friends perfectly in tune simply talk about whatever they want, you know. Um, and this is something I rarely encountered before in, in books like these. From a structural point of view, the book mostly respects the original timelines uh, of the original interviews in chronological order, starting with 74, then 1991, but then it does take two small detours. First, dedicating 20 pages to his um, blueberry years, and then around 20 more pages uh, to the birth of the Mobius uh, pen name, if that's how we can call it looking at, oh, that's my bookmark there, um, looking, at, um, looking at his early work, uh, like Arzak, The Detour, The Airtight Garage, and uh, what it meant to him, to then finally continue to the last interview cycle spanning from 2000 to 2011, just a year before his death. Additionally, the editors make uh, the excellent choice of labeling you see here, of labeling sections to summarize what the subject of that specific page or pages is, so that we can easily identify when Mobius is talking about Tron, uh, Silver Surfer, or the Tahiti years. You know, a small choice, but uh, one with big impact, since it makes it easy for nerds like me to pick up the book and quickly find the information I might be looking for. In terms of scope, uh, Dr. Mobius and Mr. Jir uh, really covers everything um, from uh, his childhood, uh, his first jobs, his trips to Mexico, his career start with uh, Charlier and Blueberry, his friendship with uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky, moving to Tahiti to join the cult of Appel Guerri, um, and then to um, to LA, uh, to his meeting with Stan Lee, working in the US, uh, his career move uh, in the movies, movie industry with Tron, with Dune, with Willow, uh, his relationship with Japan, his creative process, his techniques, and of course, touching on all of his major body of work and how it came to be. On top of that, uh, it is sprinkled with the strategically placed quotes and comments from friends, colleagues, uh, relatives and fellow artists which have been part of Mobius' life. For example, we find uh, Stan Lee, we find Archie Goodwin, the legend, <laughs> Alejandro Jodorowsky, we find uh, Jean Aneste, we find Federico Fellini, we find, uh, you see, this is one of them here, we find uh, Jean-Michel uh, Charlier, etc. We even find you know, uh, you know, family members. So all of these really help in adding color and depth, expanding on the different sections of the book and often giving a different point of view on what Numa and Mobius are talking about, a different perspective. The book finally closes with uh, Numa describing his last visit to Mobius just one day before his passing. Uh, a really sad and beautiful chapter where we can see two friends being close together for one last time. So, well, how to summarize this book? In a nutshell, it is a, a goldmine of knowledge and insights. If you're a fan of really digging deep into understanding the work and the life of Mobius, uh, then this book is definitely for you. It's extensive, it's inquisitive, it's uh, multifaceted, it's fun, it's sad, it's exciting. It's uh, like a chunk 
of this artist's life has been crystallized into these pages, ready to be revealed to whoever opens it. So overall, I really liked it. Showing you some additional illustrations here. This is from Le Chasseur de Frimé, I think. Never released in English. Um, so yeah, overall, I really liked it. And I must say it was really everything I was hoping for it to be. So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, I would love to hear what you thought about it. Oh, look at this. I'll leave it here. I would like to hear, of course, what you thought about it. And in the meanwhile, thanks for watching and catch you next time.